he the Doberman? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so in what kind of, his what kind of dog is this? This is a Shih Tzu. A shih tzu. In yeah. his mind, he thinks he's a Doberman. When he was a brand newborn puppy, mm -hmm. um, he was raised by a female Doberman. Then when he was eight weeks old, my wife and I got him. And his companion was my male Doberman. So my wow. Doberman passed away several years ago. And uh, I just, I haven't had the heart to get another Doberman. Yeah. So this is my Doberman. Don't tell anybody that <laughs> Doberman Dan is a Shih Tzu. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of the Business Owner Elevation Podcast. It's Leon Street in the house, fresh and raring to go. Guys, I've literally just got back from the gym. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it leads me into the dark house. Today we have a special guest and it's actually somebody I interviewed with Robert Dean Smith just over two years ago, I believe it is. And we were just talking about it's probably like two and a half years ago. We have waiting in the wings, Mr. Doberman. Dan, how are you doing? <laughs> I am doing great, Leon. Thanks for the invite. Been looking forward to talking to you again. <laughs> me too, me too. And I think since, since we last interviewed you, I think the world of copy has consumed my businesses. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Don't blame that on me. It's not my fault, I swear. <laughs> you know, it, it, it is your fault. And I think you're partly to blame. And the reason for that is I remember specifically um, after we finished interviewing me and Robert, it was just kind of what I loved. There were many things I loved, but I, I think what I really loved the most is that you, you had the art of the cliffhanger down to a T, even in your conversation. <laughs> and for me, that, that showed the true skill of how you apply your knowledge. Now, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to read a bit of um, Dan's bio just so you get to, you know, who he is. And if you're listening to this on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, obviously you can't see that is here with me. If you're watching this on video, then you have the privilege, guys. Remember to check out the YouTube channel. Also, check us out on Facebook and you'll get the video version of this interview. So, Doberman Dan, the renegade entrepreneur. Doberman Dan is a 33-year serial entrepreneur, A-list copywriter, and three-time international best-selling author. In his spare time, he's also a professional musician and composer. I didn't know that from last time. He has started numerous info product businesses and four different nutritional supplement businesses. He's regularly hired to write sales copy for some of the most successful direct response marketers and publishers in the country. And I'm assuming that's the USA. So Dan has been publishing the Doberman Dan letter since 2011 and has many of most of the successful online marketers in the world as his subscribers. So once again, Dan, I just want to say welcome to the show. I'm looking forward to it. And I know the audience are in for a treat. So let's kick, let's kick off. Let's kick off. So first of all, I just want to ask you, do you have a success mantra or a success quote that keeps you on track and focused with, you know, achieving all that you've done so far in your career? I have a relatively new one okay. and I would like to attribute this to somebody, um, I'm sure I didn't come up with it. In fact, I, didn't, I can't claim I've come up with anything ever original in my life. So this probably came about by a variety of sources that just got mishmashed in my head because mm -hmm. it just popped into my brain at one time. And I liked it so much, I wrote it down thinking, well, I'll Google it later and find out whose quote it is. I can't find out. I can't find whose quote it is, but uh, it, it stays in the top desk drawer with me wow, on the okay, card. So you really have got it ready. <laughs> I do. The, the only thing more powerful than the word is the act. Ah, that's cool. So, and if anybody knows audience, who they can, <laughs> yeah, if anybody knows, if that's a quote from somebody, let me know. Yeah, that's a really good one. So elaborate for our audience, because I think I know where you're going with this, but it makes sense. So, and I'll give you a tad bit of my story without hopefully boring you. Mm -hmm. uh, my last real job I had uh, was I was in law enforcement. So mm -hmm. I, was, I was a cop. I was a police officer in, in the U.S. in the city of Dayton, yep. state of Ohio. 
Midwest, hence the accent. Um, so, so first three years, full-time cop, got introduced to entrepreneurship. Um, my final nine years, so 12 years total as a cop, my final nine years, full-time cop, part-time serial failure as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, I just didn't know what I didn't know, had a lot of mindset issues, self-image issues that sabotaged me at every turn, but I just put the blinders on and kept working. Mm -hmm. And, and that in spite of a really, really bad mindset that, that, like I said, was the main thing sabotaging my success and, mm -hmm. and keeping me in serial failure for darn near a decade. This, the simple fact that I kept taking action is what made all the difference, you know, and finally led to, uh, you know, what was a very small success, but at least some success. And, and you know, when, I, when that thought popped into my brain, I know it's got to be a quote from somewhere or somebody. I thought that pretty much sums up my thing right now. Like I know how powerful the word is because I use... I've, for the past darn near quarter of a century, I've used words either on paper mm -hmm. or in emails or on a website <laughs> to build my businesses, or as I like to say, to support my two bad habits of sleeping indoors and eating regularly. <laughs> so I know how powerful words are. And, and I mean, words can start wars, words can end wars, words can make people fall in love with you, words can make people murder you. <laughs> but I also know how much more powerful action is. So, yeah. so that's why that is my favorite quote mm -hmm. du jour. If you ask me this again in three months, Leon, <laughs> who knows, it might be something different. But. You know, I, I should go back to the, um, to the show notes that we had the last time. And here, here is the success quote that you gave us last time. That's why I said it'd be interesting to see if you, you know, two and a half years on, are you close to what you said? The last time you had motion beats meditation. No way. It's, it, you know what? It's basically the same damn thing exactly. I'm saying now, right? <laughs> Although I do know who said that quote. That's a Gary Halbert quote there. there. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, that's, that's pretty cool for me. And it, it's interesting that you, you kick off the show with the, the new updated quote, because like literally this morning, <clears throat> I walk into my son's room. I say, hey, Ruben, um, what are you up to? He's on his laptop um, and he's watching some YouTube gamers. Like Ruben's 11 years old. Um, and I, you know, I say to him, like, you know, how, how is this helping you towards your goal? Because he has this goal of, he says he wants to be a successful football player. So he, in the UK, that means soccer. Um, and I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. So I said, Ruben, I just want to raise your awareness around what you said your goal is. And I said, you said your goal is to be a successful football player, but you're here watching some guy on YouTube play Xbox. Yeah. Um, and I said, and I don't, I don't mind what your goal is as long as you take the necessary action towards it. And I said, if you want to play Xbox and record Xbox videos, because he started to do that. I said, that's cool. I'll support you. I said, but I just want you to be aware of what your actions are showing that you truly want to do. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's actually a really powerful quote. And as, as you said, I was like, that sounds familiar. Like something happened today. And it, <laughs> there you <Wow>. go. Wow. <laughs> I, what a good father. Um, woulda, shoulda, coulda. We can't change our past, but I wish I would have had a father like that. Mm -hmm. Is Ruben, do you have other children? Is he yeah, your I've own got son? a daughter. She's like, she's four, so she'll be five in May. So she's, she's got her time to come. <laughs> yeah, she's a little too young to grasp the concept. Exactly, but, yeah. You know, so I imagine that that wasn't necessarily popular advice. Mm -hmm. Probably he, he understands it. Yep. But, you know, his buddy would tell him that you have at it. Go ahead and waste that time on YouTube. But you're providing an example to him and keeping him on that path. I admire that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. But it, it, it's interesting, actually, because as soon as I said that to him, I just said, I said, is that supporting your goal or not? And he was, and he was like, he kind of mumbled. He says, not, Dad. 
And I said, fine. I said, look, I said, I'm not stopping you watching that. Carry on, do what you want to do. But what I am saying to you, Ruben, is like, just go after what you want to go after. Yeah. And I'll support you all the way. And then he, he opened up this video editor, started editing this video he had recorded. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> Cause we all need that. Don't we? We all need that extra bit of motivation sometimes or just to, the, to re-raise our awareness around it and just move on from there, which, you know, I, I really like that, that we started off with that. So now what I want to do, Doberman Dan, I want to get into the doghouse. I want to know more about the story. Just bring, bring our, our viewers, our listeners up to speed, kind of like where it started for you. Cause obviously you mentioned about you being a cop. Um, I, I'd really want to just get into, you know, how did this entrepreneurial thing start for you? Cause you also mentioned Gary Halbert. I know there's a bit of connection and history there. There's so many things, but I'll hand over to you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I grew up in a town called Barberton, Ohio, mm -hmm. which Northeast Ohio, which by the way, is the same, the same city Gary Halbert grew up in. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't know each other. He was much older than I was, mm -hmm. but um, that, that's where all the rubber companies had their world capitals like Goodyear, Goodrich, yeah. a bunch of others that aren't even in business now. Mm -hmm. So very blue collar town, uh, uh, poor. Uh, a lot of people came there from West Virginia uh, to work in, in the rubber factories and stuff like that. So, so a, a guy of my upbringing, what was the expected thing was when you graduate from high school, you just go to work at the rubber company and that was it. I mean, that's your fate. You just accept that. And so anyway, I had never had planted in my head that I could be an entrepreneur. I, I did want to be a musician. That was the only thing I wanted to be since age seven. And that was, I decided at age seven, that's it. This is what I'll do with my life. There's no other thing I even want to entertain. And so, um, and I tried that for a while after high school. I, uh, my parents were poor. I couldn't afford to go to college, even though I, I won a scholarship to uh, the best modern music school wow. in the U.S., Berkeley College of Music. It's like the Juilliard of yeah, modern I've, music. I've heard of Berkeley. We've heard of it. Yeah. So when you say college over here, we refer to that as university. I uh, university. Okay. So, um, that was a, a dream accomplished. Now this was the early, now from what I understand, they'll take anybody who will write a check, <laughs> but, <I think most. laughs> but back in the eighties, you really had to qualify. You had to audition and very few passed the audition. So like, this is 83. I won a $5,000 scholarship. Now to some 17 year old kid in 1983, that's a fortune. And I thought, great, four years of Berkeley paid for. It wasn't even a semester. And then that didn't include <laughs> the cost of me moving to Boston and living in Boston. So, you know, dream shot down. Mm -hmm. And I went to work trying to be a musician. And, you know, I like sleeping indoors and I prefer not to eat out of dumpsters. Mm. So I couldn't do that as a musician. I had to get a job. I bounced around from job to job. Long story short, uh, some friends of mine, we were working in security at this department store to catch shoplifters. So I, we met some of the cops and, and some of my coworkers said, hey, we're going to take the civil service test for police officer for the city right. of Dayton. Do you want to come along? <laughs> you know, this, this, here's my entire career planning, <laughs> life planning moment right there. I was like, yeah, okay, I don't have anything to do. Mm. So I took the test, did well. They kept calling me back for you. Know, long story short, I got on the police department, even though that was never, I never had a goal of doing yeah. that. I just thought, hey, you know, it's a steady job. Probably the best job a guy like me will ever get. <laughs> and, um, and then a couple years into it, somebody introduced me to the Amway business. Have you ever been hit up for Amway, Leon? No, but uh, I remember from last time when you were telling us about it, it's multi-level marketing. So it's, it's just nothing that I, I ever came across. <laughs> Which is amazing. It seems like 
every living being in the world at one time or another, if there's like a really high percent of chance they've been hit up for, for Amway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've but, been hit up by the other companies, but just not that one. <laughs> just not that one. Okay. So I like, all I remember is they're drawing these circles. The concept of me having a business was totally foreign. Mm. Never talked about when I grew up. And they drew these circles. They said, hey, at this level, and they showed you reaching this level of direct distributor in six yeah, months. Yeah. You make $2,124, which uh, that was almost to the penny what I was making as a full-time cop. Uh, and I thought, oh, let's get me free of this job so that then I can go play music, you know? <laughs> and anyway, I failed at that miserably. I did, you know, three to five times more than they said to do, still failed, yeah. but it got me started on that trajectory. And right. so then for nine straight years after that, I guess I just kept starting these different businesses, even though I knew nothing really about yeah. business and I definitely didn't know marketing, but that's what started this whole entrepreneur thing. Mm-hmm. Cool. I, I think in, in terms of obviously like, that journey and you know you you moving on to this entrepreneur thing um where i'd i'd really like to to dive into next is um we've we spoke about obviously you know in the green room you get into this point where you you know you you started up these businesses and you went through this this period of things not working so you know and i i think first of all it shows the depth of your character because there's a lot of people who you know, back out of it and quit and move on, get a job, whatever. So obviously something clicked for you. What was the next step? What happened after that? Well, I, you know, man, oh man, after nine straight years of constant failure, I mean, there were so many businesses that failed. I just, you know, I kept searching. I thought there's Mm -hmm. something I got to, I'm doing something wrong. So I found Dan Kennedy and I bought this thing for $397 called magnetic marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And what it was, was he promised it would be like a, basically a done for you marketing system for your business. So you don't have to go chase clients and customers. They'll come to you. And I thought, thank God, because I (laughs) suck at this getting customers thing. Finally. (laughs) So I bought it. I didn't have the money. I paid for it on a visa, which was probably, you know, I probably had $401 credit left on the visa and I buy this $397 thing. And, uh, and I, and I read it and it made perfect sense because it's really all it was about was using direct response marketing yeah. for a brick and mortar business for all intents and purposes for a traditional brick and mortar business. And it totally made sense. And I thought, yeah, so I guess I could do this to save, you know, this 27th business in a row that has yeah. failed and is about to crash and burn. Or, you know, I just let the stupid thing crash and burn since it's already on that trajectory. And I copy what this Dan Kennedy guy is doing. Also, another guy from Northeast Ohio. <laughs> And um, I thought, this guy sold me this thing. It was a three ring binder. It must've been like this thick. Yeah. Uh, this is back in the early nineties. So it was like 10th generation Xerox copies. If anybody even remembers the Xerox machine yeah. and cassette tapes that sounded like, this is Bob Kennedy. <laughs> it was like 10th generation cassette tape copies if anybody even remembers cassettes yeah. it's it's what we used to listen to back when we wrote dinosaurs leon yeah absolutely and, <laughs> and and so i thought he's i mean he's maybe maybe got ten dollars total in this thing and he sold it to me for 400 with words on paper i'm like i want to do that yeah so i didn't know anything all i knew was what i saw him doing but i just modeled that and created a self-published uh, bodybuilding course mm-hmm. and started selling that with a lead generation ad in the bodybuilding magazines. And anyway, after nine straight years of failure, that was the first business that actually worked. And it was only, it was only about 12 months after that, it, that it was making enough money that I was finally able to quit my job as a police officer, which wow. was the goal the entire previous yeah. 10 years, nine years, whatever. 
Wow. So you, you really put the work in at that point to make that happen then? Because obviously you was working at the same time and it was full time as a cop, yeah? Yeah. So I worked, I worked nights. I worked a really screwy shift, like 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I get home maybe 2, sometimes 3 o'clock doing paperwork. Would often have to be in court at 8 a.m. Wow. So, and then back at work at 4. So it was a more than full-time job and I just had to squeeze that stuff in. Yeah. bits and pieces when I could cool cool well just again I think it just shows the, the character that you displayed to you know to actually make it happen because that, that's half the battle as an entrepreneur and I, I suppose everybody listening Elevation Nation it's you know there's there's many times I come across um, prospects people who I'm speaking to about taking them to the next level and there's, there's so many people even when they become a client that they're just held back by the stuff that's going on in their head and so for you to be you know holding that down still driving forward and make it happen you know it's, it's a really big thing that I, I think a lot of people they gloss over and they, they don't actually give the attention for what it is and it, it's actually a big thing when you make the breakthrough and you know forever I always say it's, it's the ongoing challenge to get better and improve upon yourself and I think that's going to lead us up perfectly, Dan, because I know in terms of, you know, getting clients and, you know, growing a business. And we were talking about this again. It's, it's one of them things where I, I would love for you to share some ideas about, you know, how people could go about getting clients and, you know, how copy has an influence on that working and being effective. Sure. Um, so, Really, prior to 2012, I was not really a hired gun copywriter. I All the copy I wrote, it was always for my own businesses. Then I sold, um, I had a, a supplement business in the bodybuilding niche that I sold in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I thought, first of all, it sold really quickly. I thought it would take longer. So I didn't, I wasn't really totally prepared for what my next step in life was, but, and I just thought, Oh, okay, well, I'll just start uh, making myself available to write copy for other businesses. But people who hire freelance copywriters, a lot of them really didn't know who I was because I just didn't run in those circles. I was running my own business. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't start with getting clients until 2012. Yeah, when I worked with Halbert, so those were his clients. I had nothing to do with the getting of clients. Yeah. And occasionally when I still had my own businesses, somebody I knew who was in a similar business, very rarely they'd offer me something and I'd write mm -hmm. for them. But as far as getting clients, I didn't really start until 2012. Cool. And I thought, mm, it's going to be a piece of cake. I've been, you know, writing copy for, <laughs> you know, all this time. And so this will be easy. Uh, it was, it was not easy. I made all the mistakes. I, I undersold myself. I prospected, worked with wrong people. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've got some views on how to do it. First of all, so I've gone legally bankrupt once mm -hmm. and lost everything. And, you know, the official actual court process, legal yep. bankruptcy. <clears throat> and I have gone technically bankrupt an additional four times throughout this whole entrepreneurial career. <laughs> um, you know, and the only reason those weren't legal bankruptcies, because you can only do that, whatever it is, every seven years. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and so even though I lost everything four additional times, I thought I don't need to involve the court system. I know how to dig myself out. Yeah. But you know, the last time being 2005 mm -hmm. where I was literally living out of my car with an 80 pound Doberman, if you can yeah. believe that. I, I remember in, that story from the last time we spoke. Crazy. So like <laughs> I know having an immediate financial need, um, so I've got some ideas for people with an, an immediate financial need for getting clients. It's not ideal and you're not going to get probably not going to get ideal clients nor ideal pay. Mm -hmm. And then I have a much, much better plan 
for getting clients. So would you want, did you want me to cover them both? Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to cover both because like the other one sounds like the, the dirty approach and then the other one's kind of like the clean and cut, let's go for it and make it better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so if anybody is in the, the situation like I've been in, you know, uh, the, your utilities have been cut off, the wolf is at the door, you know, the, the sheriff's deputy is knocking on your door to serve you notice of <laughs> eviction or whatever, um, the, you, you need to get something going now. Mm -hmm. And how I found, I, one of the ways I found is, uh, well, first of all, you know what? You need to do whatever it takes. So first of all, you just got to adapt that attitude. You got to do whatever it takes. Yeah. You know, give up on this idea of the universe dropping something into your lap. Mm -hmm. I hope it happens. It probably is not going to happen. So you've got to be able to do whatever it takes. And that's going to require some grunt work, mm -hmm. which, you know, it, it ain't pretty. We all got in this thing because we're thinking, oh, we want money to fall out of the sky and people mm -hmm. to call us from, you know, Trump is going to call us out of the blue and want to hire us for a million dollar contract. It'll take yeah. us 15 minutes of work to do. No, <laughs> you got to get whatever it is you do. You have to do whatever it takes to get in front of someone or a group of people who hire people who do what you do. Mm -hmm. If that means you gotta, you know, get out of your house and trek to a meeting yeah. and get in front of them or some seminar is going on and you don't even have the money for the seminar, find out where the hotel is mm -hmm. and go and hang out in the bar after the seminar. You've got to get in front of people. Yeah. And, and so if that's not an option, another way I found to do that is uh, LinkedIn. I've just, I don't mess with social media. I especially don't do anything on Facebook because mm -hmm. that's, that's like, you know, true social media. It's just people chatting and yeah. looking at pictures of cats and tutus and, you know, and, and using Facebook for what it's supposed to be used for mm -hmm. looking up your exes to see how fat they've gotten. <laughs> the people on Facebook are not <laughs> in a business mindset, mm -hmm. but in LinkedIn they are. Yeah. So what I did when I had an immediate need, I, I searched for the people who hire people who do what I do. Okay. So in my case, that was publishers yeah. of financial information or health information mm -hmm. or nutritional supplement companies. So um, I just started reaching out to people on LinkedIn. Yeah. I didn't hit them up for a gig. Like, hey, I'm a copywriter. Got any projects? <laughs> Cause that's what everybody else is doing. Instead, yeah. what I did is I said, hey, I noticed you publish health information. Here are two articles I think you'll find interesting. And then I sent them links to articles I wrote about me writing for the health business mm -hmm. on my blog. If you don't have a blog, don't let that stop you. Write an essay and save it as a PDF file. Yeah, okay? yeah. Let's not complicate this because mm -hmm. again, the sheriff's deputies at your door <laughs> trying to evict you. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't get a gig going on LinkedIn, you're going to have to take that job, uh, <laughs> you, you know, as the exotic dancer. We know you don't want to do that. <laughs> so, so let's make this simple. So you send them the two articles trying to provide some value for them. Um, you know, you ask them to connect with you mm -hmm. first. I'm sorry. That's the first step on LinkedIn. You have to do that. Ask for a connection. When they approve the connection, that's when you give them your article or your couple articles that mm -hmm. are directly applicable to what they do. And then happen to mention that, Hey, I am a fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. If, if you have a, a need for something like that, I'd be happy to discuss it. It's a numbers game. You're going to have to do that with a lot of people. Yeah. But when you have an immediate need that has worked for me, I've pulled clients out of there. Um, immediately doing that. And everybody said, well, you're Doberman Dan. They no, I did this back when nobody knew who I was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, I like that approach because it, I call it the guerrilla marketing approach and it's basically direct outreach. Um, you're not kind of jumping in people's faces. Like you said, um, like I'm a copywriter or I'm a marketer, whatever you are. It's kind of, you know, here's some stuff that you may find interesting. You build up the conversation and then at that point you kind of hit them with, by the way, this is what I do. Um, and, and I think it's good, you know, it's a good approach and I like that. Um, LinkedIn, interestingly enough, um, 
I've just got back on it in the past probably four months. Um, I was around about 2,000 connections and I've just upped it to 3,000 in the past four months. Um, just And literally, <clears throat> for everybody watching on like the video, I just get the app and every now and again, I'll just add up like 50 people, just add. I don't even send an introduction message. I just add. And it's like you said, it's a numbers game. Um, and I, I put in the search for who I'm searching for my you know particular um, niche who I'm targeting put them in and this ad um, and I think it's a really great way because whilst you know we run ad campaigns and all the rest of it and we, we run on Facebook we run on um, Google AdWords LinkedIn has also brought some really great, great clients so I like that approach so what, what's the um, the non gorilla method <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the slow boat to China method, which is, in my opinion, it's the best method. Mm -hmm. And and I have a feeling very few people are going to like this. Okay. Um, you don't have to like it. You will like the results. Good. Um, well, if we look at, at, at copywriters, mm -hmm. freelance copywriters, what I like to call hired gun copywriters, yep. which is, as Gary Halbert called it um prostitution he said the, but he said it's the worst kind of prostitution because uh you know regular prostitute just just sells her body mm -hmm. but a uh, freelance copywriter sells his mind yeah so in in what i've been doing since 2012 i hardly see anybody doing this me and dan kennedy i also amongst all the copywriters I know and since I've been working with, you know, the big publishers like Agora yep. and Primal Health, now I know everybody in this world practically. Um, as far as autonomy and income, mm -hmm. I don't see anybody doing better than me and Dan Kennedy. And I w again, I'd love to take credit for this. I've just observed Dan Kennedy all these years and saw what he was doing mm -hmm. and recognized the genius of that yeah. in other sources that I've seen doing this, mm -hmm. uh, like certain doctors yeah. and just adapted that. And, um, it, it puts you in a category of one mm -hmm. and it's, it ain't easy and it's not the quick way to get clients, but it's basically the process of making yourself a celebrity expert, as I call it. Awesome. So, tell so there's, a, there's a lot of moving components to that. First of all, celebrity is highly valued. Like, mm -hmm. Dr. Oz, is, is he a better doctor than your family doctor you go to? Probably. I don't, you know, probably not. He's probably as good, or who knows, mm -hmm. you know, because he may be a completely incompetent and got kicked out of every practice he's been at. We don't know because what do you call the guy who finished last in medical school? <laughs> Doctor. Okay. So he could like be just barely made it through. He could be a complete flunky. We don't know, but he's done things to make himself a celebrity. Yeah. You know, therefore his income is probably a thousand times plus, plus, plus more than your general practitioner down the street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it's the same with anything. It's the same with coaches. It's the same with copywriters. The guy or gal who will do the work to, to not just become uh, a, an expert in their particular specialty, but will become the celebrity expert, now gets paid exponentially more than all their other competitors. In fact, for all intents and purposes, they don't have competitors. Because yeah. you get paid, when, when, you, when you position yourself that way, you get paid not so much for what you do, you get paid for who you are. Yeah. So that is, you know, if you wanna see how to do that, you could observe Dan Kennedy, although he's, Dan is kind of winding down right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could just observe me. <laughs> and it and it's a uh, publisher parish. You got to be publishing stuff. Um, and a real book is essential. A real newsletter. When I say a real newsletter, a newsletter delivered on in paper and ink by the postal mm -hmm. service, it's essential. All the other supporting things to that 
posting on a blog. If you want to do social media, go for it. I, that's not my thing. You know, YouTube videos, uh, podcast, all this supports itself. Speaking to groups, being seen with those who are big shots in your thing. You know, you're particular getting endorsed by them, you know. So bit, I've been on the stage with the association kind of. Exactly. I've been on stage with Dan Kenny. I've been the only invited speaker at his Dan only event. Wow. Um, you know, there's a great movie called Kumari. K U M A R E. It's a documentary okay, I don't about this mean. guy from New Jersey who creates this fictitious character named Kumari who's a a guru, a spiritual guru from India. And he shows how he makes himself a guru. And wow. one of the things, there's a picture of him walking down the street in India mm -hmm. with a throng of people behind him, thousands of people following him. <laughs> and he's walking beside one of the most well-known spiritual gurus in India. They're walking shoulder to shoulder together. <laughs> and he said, yeah, he goes, I went to India with my camera crew. And when that guy was walking down the street with his thousands of followers behind him, I just ran up beside him and just started walking along with him. But yet that implied endorsement, <laughs> you know, that's a, you know, that's a good study that movie yeah. Kumari on a lot of different levels on how to make yourself an expert. So again, like I said, the slow boat to China, mm -hmm. you're not going to start doing these things and all of a sudden, yeah. you know, clients, the best clients you've ever worked with will drop in your lap, paying you the highest fees. Mm -hmm. It's a process. But if, if you want to get paid, you know, the most for what you do and you should, you might as well leverage your time. Yeah. I, I think that's good, what's been successful. It's, it's a really, really good point actually, Dan, because um, my first book that I've written is currently in publishing with my editor um, or in the editing process even. And it, it was something I was, I was looking at over a year ago. Um, started messing with a, a joint book with three other authors. Um, it got as far as we'd put the content together. And then three years before that, I'd started a book, got a quarter of the way, and then just gave up the ghost. Um, but last September, just gone, um, up until December, I finished the book. And <clears throat> the reason was positioning, just like what you just explained there. But I, I never really looked at it from a a celebrity point of view. I always look at it position as the expert. You know, you hear that all the time. But the way you just described it, I think actually people will take a lot from that because interestingly enough, in the in the past three days, I've I've been contacted by a speaking agency from um, the USA actually. And the the title that I use for myself is the lead generation coach. And they've got in touch with me and they said exactly what you just said. They said, hey, we know you're an expert on lead generation. And I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> because I know the only place they've seen that is on my website. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> because everywhere else, I don't really tend to put the lead generation culture. I, I put it in videos, but it's not like the first thing you kind of stumble across. So I think, you know, credit to what you just shared with everybody because... <clears throat> Now I've got the opportunity where I'm speaking to these guys who have an event for, so they're, you know, like a bureau, speaking, speaking bureau, but they've got um, a manufacturer of um, hearing aids. But what they want is to bring somebody along who can help their, you know, um, distributors with lead generation. And so I'm just like, hmm, this is interesting, actually, because what you've described is in actual fact. It's something I've experienced. When you put in the work, you do podcasts, you do videos, you know, you, you, you create the blogs. Um, you do position yourself as an expert. But I love what you just said. Actually, go the full hog and become the celebrity. Yeah. And get, Absolutely. And, and get some Dobermans. <laughs> <laughs> that so, helps. Your life, listen, the, the most important piece of advice I could give you today, Leon, mm -hmm. is your life will be so much better with at least one Doberman in it. Two Dobermans, double. You know, double. you know, the funny thing is, get this done. When I was eight years old, my father bought me my first dog and have a guess what it was. Uh, was it a Doberman? It was a Doberman. Was it really? It was re really, and his name was Tyson. <laughs> Oh, great name. Yeah. So if, if I was eight, that was like um, 1988. Yeah. So 30 years ago. There you go. 
So now I just now I just figured out how old, how old you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you actually you look younger than that though. By the <laughs> good, way. I shaved today, so you know, like. <laughs> 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 but, but thank you, thank you. You're very kind. You're very kind. So here, here's the thing. Now, talking of celebrity, I know you're a published author. Um, which book should I ask you about, really? Because I'm aware of, you know, J S T D T. Yeah. J S T D T. Just sell the damn thing. Mm. So my contra- my controversial book. Um, so th- my latest book. When was that released? Recently, recently. Mm-hmm. It's it's on Amazon, and I'm and I'm selling it myself, also in hard copy. Um, so, yeah, here's that's a good example of what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. The book is the book is the calling card, of course. Well, first of all, lots of benefits from a book, as you know, Leon. Mm-hmm. The guy who writes the book, or, or it's, excuse me. You know, if you haven't noticed, I am of the male persuasion. Um, I view the world that way. So I use male pronouns, but the same thing applies for the, for the ladies. Remember, it's International the, Women's Day today as well, Dan, so be careful. <laughs> I was reminded of that first thing this morning by my other half. So let me let, rewind. The person who writes the book is the expert. Yeah. Uh, it's just automatically that's just assumed you mm. wrote the book on the topic literally so you got that going with a book um it's it's your calling card even if somebody doesn't read it you know they just look at it and uh, oh, written by leon street and yeah. skim it uh oh lead generation expert great it's awesome um you know part of this celebrity thing is uh defining your persona i'm just going over this really quickly yeah so doberman dan is a persona he's mm-hmm. an amplified version mm-hmm. of my real self he's he's like you know anybody who's been on a first date gets this idea you have your best foot forward yeah, you're yeah. dressed nicely oh, you show up and smile you. <laughs> absolutely you don't you know you don't show up and torn t-shirt and start belching and passing gas and stuff. That's usually the second date. Yeah. But um, so, you know, Doberman Dan is the best foot forward and an exaggerated version of my good qualities, mm-hmm. my, my, my not so good qualities of which there are many are just usually not mentioned. <laughs> Although I have been mentioning them more recently. Um, you know, so he's an exaggerated person and this ex cop thing, you know, I tell stories about that, but related to marketing. Yeah. So I'm trying to create a celebrity persona that is all throughout that book. Right. Um, you know, with the hope being that, Hey, if somebody doesn't understand the lessons, they'll at least be slightly entertained a little bit by some of these stories. So, I mean, that, that's, that just goes along with everything we've been saying that supports this whole thing of creating, making yourself a celebrity as much as an illusion is all that is. Um, it, the book is a big part of it. Awesome. Awesome. And you know, you know, like, like I said, it, it's something that I realized in, there's a reason why I'd put it in my goals. I'd started it before hand acted on it. And it's kind of like, I was just like commit to it, Leon, and get it done. And it's exactly what you say. What I recognize is that whilst people, you know, still inquire either about the services or about what I can do for them, that type of thing. I just, it's like you say, it's the calling card and that's the element that I want to go down. Um, and so for me, I'm on that first step and, you know, I hope to join the high ranks of what you're doing with your book and so on. So I'm gonna have to go and buy a copy as well, actually, um, get it shipped over. So is it on? Amazon well, thank you for that. Or, or is it just shipped direct from you? It's, it's on Amazon, uh, so you can get a Kindle version. You can get a hard copy version on Amazon, although I'm selling, I'm selling it myself for a penny, mm-hmm. plus shipping and handling. For those in the UK, or for those, excuse me, not just the UK, but those outside of the US, yeah. I believe it's twelve ninety nine shipping and handling. Okay. Um, well, guys, look, let, so, let me just say from now, Dan, anybody listening to this, um, 
get the book. Guy's a genius. The last interview, me, me and Rob were like laughing off our rocker. Um, I, and I, I've enjoyed this more because for me, it's kind of like, ah, let's go back for the conversation. But I just wanted to dig in a bit more into the story and just, you know, just enjoy the time with you as opposed to like just that raw uncut where we didn't really know you other than Rob being like, he's, he's one of my heroes, Leo. <laughs> 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 Until he met me, right? And yeah. he's like, eh, <laughs> no, he, he I'm was so sure about that guy. He still loved that. So, I mean, obviously, you've done lots of great things. Um, could we do some quick fire questions just as we get close to wrapping up then? Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, cool. All right, then. So, copywriting. For me, one of the, the, the inroads to getting successful ads, getting people to respond to you, you know, in, in, a, in a reasonable way. Give me three key things business owners, coaches, professionals should pay attention to with creating copy, whatever it is. Uh, it's all about the market. You, you don't, you don't have to overcomplicate this. I've, I've done that so many times. I've made myself so miserable. Mm -hmm. You don't have to overcomplicate. You don't have to worry about your writing style. You don't have to worry about proper English and should this have a comma here or not? Is mm -hmm. this a good word choice? You know, Good. don't do that. For, for, for mentally ill people like me who choose to write at the level of an A-list cover, like for Agora, mm -hmm. let those, those sick, crazy people deal with that heartache. For almost all other businesses, if you're writing copy for your business, you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. It's all about knowing your market and just making them an irresistible mar offer. So making the best offer you possibly can to a starving crowd. Mm -hmm. Screw writing style. Just say it. You know, if we, if we want to simplify this even more, figure out your offer. I mean, first identify your market, know as much about them as you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Know what will be an irresistible offer to them, mm -hmm. work out those details and then just record yourself as selling it, offering it to them. Send it over to transcriptionists. I use rev, R -E -V .com to yeah, do great right. work. Have it transcribed and then just clean it up a little bit so it's more, you know, so it doesn't sound like it's dictated, like a run on sentence. Mm -hmm. Edit it so it's readable. Mm -hmm. And that's the best, I, you know, that's the best advice I think I could give to most people about writing copy. Awesome. It's all about the market and the offer. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Th thanks for sharing that. I actually had a conversation with um, a lady earlier today, actually, um, talking about um, some of the marketing she was doing. She was like, I was berated by somebody she knew for not being the greatest person at spelling. I was like, damn. I was like, forget set spelling. Don't worry about spelling. Just get the thing done. Um, and it's because of the things you just said about knowing who, who the target market is and what the offer is and creating that irresistible offer. Cool. So. Um, your, your three go-to copywriters or people that you look into, and, and I, I believe you mentioned a couple, but I just want to just ratify them. Uh, as far as like for studying, for inspiration yeah. and all that stuff. And inspiration. Yeah. Okay. So anytime I feel lost or I feel like I suck or I've lost it, like I've lost it. I can never do that. I can't do it again. I'm done. I'm fried. I'm burned out. It, Dan, you're, you're a cop. <laughs> <In business>. I did. <laughs> and it depends on what time of day. Oh, I, I mean, in the morning, I may feel like, you know what? been doing this quarter of a century. I'm finally feeling like I'm pretty good. And then in the afternoon, it's like, I suck. <laughs> Why even try anymore? I'm going to go apply for the greeter job at Walmart. And sadly, I'm almost to the age of the people who are greeters at Walmart. You know, so anytime I'm feeling like that, I, I go back to Gary Halbert. I, I, there's just, there's none better mm -hmm. for me. And, you know, Gary and I were a lot alike in several ways, in, in some ways that are, <laughs> it's unfortunate that I'm, <laughs> a lot like him but it, you know when you read a Gary Halbert piece and it goes back to what I just said you know what his brilliance was you read his stuff you're not going to see any great writing there's no writing pyrotechnics or special mm. phrases or special words or elegant prose no it's written on a sixth grade writing level 
and it's written in a way that it sounds like you're sitting at one of these greasy spoon late night diners in the Midwest, which is where I am from and where Gary's from, the Midwest. Yeah. Having a conversation with a guy from the Midwest saying stuff like anywho and stuff like that. Um, so no great writing, but what you'll see in a Halbert piece is, and that and this was his brilliance, he understood the market so well and he knew exactly what they, want, what they wanted and he knew how to make an irresistible offer. The writing part of it was just presenting that with clarity. So that's, Halbert is a biggie for me. Um, I, I, that's, that's number one for me. I, I study many. And if, you know, Dan Kennedy is another one. Mm -hmm. um, Dan Kennedy writes on a, a much, he's much more of an intellectual, even in his copy than Halbert. But I really admire his. Gary Benzavanga is another mm -hmm. one. But, you know, my, my go-to is Halbert. If you want to see Good. brilliance in what copywriting really is, that's, that's the one for me. Good. Thank you for sharing that, Dan. Cool. So what I'd like to do is um, move on to this. What's the one thing in business or how you work that you can't live without? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, wow. The first thought that came to mind was my computer, but that's not true because um, I've created some of my best copy on a, on a, just a yellow legal pad and a blue wow. pen. Uh, one thing in business that I can't live without. Uh, you know, <laughs> if I lost everything and had to start all over, yeah. uh, if I had the option mm -hmm. of keeping my customer list, my current customer list, because I, I, I don't have supplement businesses anymore. I don't have other niche businesses. I have my Doberman Dan business, which yeah. is, you know, my books, my membership, you know, my newsletter. Mm -hmm. If that was an option to lose everything, to literally lose everything. Well, could I keep my dog? I really want to keep oh, my dog. Of course. Doberman Dan, of course you can keep your dog. Okay. I want to keep my dog. I want to keep my wife <laughs> and lose everything else, every penny. If I could keep my customer list, like even if it's just on, you know, a, a little... Here. Oh, you'll like this. Even if it's just on a thumb drive, I don't know if you can see it's a wow, Doberman. A Doberman Dan thumb drive. So see, wow. his head pops <laughs> off. So if I could keep my customer list, even just on a thumb drive, um, I'd, be, I'd be back in business you know, the next day. In this type of business, in, as a, a coaching business, a consultant, an online business, Mm -hmm. We're not like brick and mortar or a factory yeah. where our assets are machines and buildings. Your number one asset, technically your only asset, mm -hmm. is your customer list. And more importantly, the, the relationship with your customer list, yeah. with your customers. Excuse me. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So, Doberman Dan, I just want to say thank you. It has been a pleasure. I've enjoyed this conversation, spending the hour with you. So I just want to say thanks for taking the time out for this interview. Elevation Nation, day along with us, really appreciate it. Now, if somebody wishes to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Um, let us know. The, so my main hub, so to speak, is yeah. at DobermanDan.com. Awesome. And there are plenty of articles, case studies, essays, on all topics related to being an entrepreneur and related to online marketing and copywriting and stuff like that. Cool. And if they choose to opt in, um, then they'll see a, a new business model that I'm, <laughs> I'm doing now, which is, it's, well, it's, it's exactly the, the entire business model that my new book is about too. Cool. So that's like the main hub to find me. I do my own podcast all, mm -hmm. also. And it's called Off the Chain yep. with Doberman Dan. And you can find that on iTunes or uh, you can go to offthechainshow.com and there's uh, all the episodes there too. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Guys, make sure you check out the resources over at Dan's site. Great resources, the podcast as well. It's one of the things that me and Rob back when we did, before we did the first interview, Rob was like, Leon, listen to this episode and listen to this episode. Lots of great content. And we're going back probably like, I know I said two and a half, but nearly three years. 
when we were doing the research and obviously prepping. So thanks for sharing that. Um, once again, I just want to say thank you for listening. And remember, Elevation Nation, it's through your support that we continue to grow and bring you more great guests just like Dan. So please leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and we'll continue to elevate you. Now, at the beginning, you shared a quote, Dan. I would love for you to leave us with that very quote as the final word. I'm happy to do it. The only thing more powerful than the word is the act. Thank you. And on that note, I just want to say thank you. Take care. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Leon. I enjoyed it.